Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I have another art journal layout for you. I have uh, one more page on uh, this art journal book and I want to finish it before the next year. So I'm going to create a very similar uh, color combo with uh, the previous one that I shared uh, about a week ago. And uh, I'm working with my distress paints here, applying some shades of blue. You will see all uh, the colors on screen as I am using them, but you will find a full list of all the supplies just like always on my blog as well as on the description uh, box just underneath this video on YouTube. And I have to apologize about my voice, I'm having a bit of a cold right now. So now moving on in another distress paint color and that's tumbled glass and uh, I'm going to apply this time the paint with a brayer. So I'm going all over the first layer and I didn't wait for that to dry at all. After all, it dries super quickly just because I didn't prepare my pages with uh, gesso. The paper was quite porous, so it um, uh, went dry really quickly. Now I'm moving on to another uh, distress paint. This is weathered wood and again I'm applying it with my brayer. Notice that I add my uh, distress paint on top of uh, my glass mat. I really love my glass mat uh, on, when I'm working on mixed media because I can apply my paint, inks and everything else on top of it and it's super easy to clean up. Now, I uh, don't want to waste all that uh, paint that I have on my glass mat at the moment, so I'm going to prepare one page with all that uh, paint that I have. So I have something started there for another project. Now I'm using one of my art foamies and I'm going to use the paint that I already have on my craft desk to add some interest on my background. Now the thing with the backgrounds and uh, in my projects is that uh, I always like to have some kind of interest, something going on back there, but I don't want it to be uh, too vibrant. I always like to keep my backgrounds quite um, subtle just because I like to add focal points and I don't want the focal points to try to compete with the backgrounds. I used my heat gun to speed up the drying process and as I was looking at my background I felt that I needed to add a darker color so that's why I grabbed one more distress paint and uh, that's uh, Mermaid Lagoon that's a gorgeous color. I'm just adding uh, a dot of uh, paint on my craft table and then I'm going to apply it again with my brayer. And I feel that this added the definition that I was going for. I used a fairly dry baby wipe to slightly blend it so that it's not that rough and now I can clean my craft table and then go ahead and use my heat gun to speed up the drying process. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, stamping on the background. For that I will be using a text stamp that I had for ages and I'm going to use uh, archival ink and uh, the color I'm using is cobalt. I'm not inking up the whole stamp and um, that's because I don't want to have blocks of text all the way from the beginning to the end of the page. I just like to have uh, stamping here and there. So although I'm keeping the text quite straight, I make sure that I don't ink up everything. Archival ink dries permanent and it is important to use a permanent ink at this stage because I have way more steps and uh, lots of uh, things to do on top of this uh, background and I don't want my ink to smudge or smear. And now just for the fun of it I'm going to do some stenciling. I'm using a uh, picket fence, this is a distress paint but I do have the one with the dabber on top so it's easy for me to do the stenciling. The stencil I'm using is by Prima and it's an old stencil, I don't know if it is discontinued but I couldn't find it to link it for you, probably it is an old one and uh, I have uh, made sure that I applied uh, little details here and there on my background. I left everything to dry and now I'm working with my paper trimmer and uh, I'm cutting out strips of paper without measuring. Some are thin, some are uh, thicker and uh, the paper I'm using by the way is by Ranger and this is mixed media paper. So these are going to be my tree trunks and I'm going for a winter scene today. So I'm going to place them on top of uh, my layout and uh, for some of those tree trunks I'm going to start from the bottom all the way to the top while for others I'm going to glue them slightly raised and this is going to give the illusion as if those tree trunks are far at the background. <laughs> 
I am also making sure that I only stick uh, five of them, so I leave enough space for my quote later on. I always like to add a quote on my pages. And I'm going to stick everything down with my matte medium. Now, uh, notice that uh, I use the thicker ones for the foreground, while the thinner ones go at the background, starting slightly uh, raised, not at the bottom of the page. And there is another technique that you can do if you want to have similar results. And uh, before you start uh, creating your background, you can use uh, masking tape in different widths to create your tree trunks. You can then create your background on top and when everything is dry, just peel off the masking tapes. And as I was gluing those down, I got the idea to use this Sizzix tie. This is designed by Tim Holtz and it gives you a big deer and uh, three little ones. And uh, if you stick those on top of your layouts uh, close to each other, then it will uh, look as if you have an adult uh, deer and uh, tiny little ones. But if you stick uh, the small ones uh, slightly raised, they will look as if they are far at the background. And this is exactly what I will do with one of them. So I'm just picking uh, three dies there. I'm going to run them through my Sizzix machine to cut them out. And again, I'm using mixed media paper by Ranger. I'm going to place them on the side for now and I will uh, go back to them later on when I finish my background and my tree trunks. I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess of the tree trunks. And uh, you can see that I'm not working back to back with the previous uh, page. I hope you don't uh, listen to my kids playing at the background. <laughs> they make a lot of noise. And uh, anyway, I'm going to continue and add some detailing on the tree trunks just to make them look like trees. So these are going to end up being beech trees. They have a lovely texture and they are really easy to make. So on one side of my tree trunks, I'm adding some shadows. And this is a cool gray. It's a big brush marker by Faber-Castell. And I will do the same thing on all the tree trunks. And now I'm going to add some uh, color on those tree trunks. For that I'm using two different colors of Distress Paint, Ground Espresso and Rusty Hinge. And I have probably added way more paint that I actually need on my craft table there. And I'm going to work with a credit card. Oh, this is a plastic card that I got in bulk. You can get hundreds of them. <laughs> they are very cheap. Or you can just use an old uh, gift card that you have on hand. Now I dip one edge on my paint and then touch the edge of the tree trunk only on one side and add the color. Notice that I didn't mix up the colors too much and this way you can see both colors on my tree trunks. With the edge of my card I can drag the color and create some lines that give even more texture and I will continue doing the same thing on all my tree trunks. And I think this is a really great technique, it's a great way to play around with your paints and uh, really create beautiful results. Go ahead and try it out, I know that you will love it. Just because the tree trunks are uh, completely straight and the card is straight as well, it's really easy to align it and uh, you don't go outside the lines. Now with my finger I can go ahead and uh, blend out the edges just a little bit so they are not as rough. This is uh, fairly dry, so I don't move the ink as much. You can leave those tree trunks as they are, they are gorgeous. But uh, I will go ahead and add a touch of highlight on the other side of the trees, using the exact same technique again, but this time with acrylic paint. So this is Picket Fence, a distress paint, and I'm just touching the right side of the trees repeating the same technique. This detail is not going to make a huge difference, but it is going to add uh, a touch of highlight on your trees. Now, with my thin black marker, I'm going to add a line on one side, the darker side of my trees, which is going to make them pop even more against the background. Just make sure that all the acrylic paint is totally dry, otherwise you will ruin your markers. And I'm also going to use this marker to add some lines along the trees from coming out from both sides. 
And you can do that with um, a dark brown marker. You can do it with your white marker, as I will be doing it later on, to add some highlights as well. And as you create those lines, make sure that you give them a curve so they are not completely straight, as if they are following the roundness of the tree. Since the highlight is on the left side of the tree, I can leave it alone, but just because I don't know when to stop with my black marker, I'm going to add a very thin line along uh, that uh, edge, which is going to help it um, pop against the background as well. But make sure that your marker is very, very thin. And now I'm going to use my white gel pen, add some uh, white lines along the trees, just like I did with my black marker, to highlight it even more. And I just love the way my tree trunks look. So here I am trying to decide where everything is going to go. And I always like to have similar elements on both my pages because this is what brings everything together. So I do have tree trunks on both my pages and I will have animals on both of them. Now I'm going to use this uh, white gesso and apply some color at the bottom of my page where I haven't touched it yet. And um, this is going to be the snow. However, I like to keep everything quite um, random at, uh, and I don't want to have a um, straight line on my horizon. So I want that to be quite foggy and abstract uh, where the snow ends and where the um, sky starts. And this is why I'm going to use my fingers to blend it out to blue. So this is where I'm using my finger to dab the end of the snow, which is going to give a fade out look all the way to the blue sky. Now I want my deer to come from behind the tree just to give it some interest. So I made uh, a pencil line there on uh, where exactly I want to chop it. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick everything down. I'm using matte medium as my glue and when everything is dry I will go ahead and color them with my big brush markers. Now of course you can color all your animals beforehand and stick them down once everything is ready. I'm going to show you how I colored the big deer and then I will repeat the same process for the rest of the animals. I'm using three different shades of brown by big brush markers and uh, you can see the colors on your screen. I touch the tip of my marker, add a little bit of ink on my animal and then blend it out with my finger. Now, if you are wondering how I blend without getting outside of uh, the lines, this is quite easy just because I'm using mixed media paper, which is quite thick and it stands out against the background. So it's not completely flat. If that was um, printer paper, for example, I wouldn't be able to do that with the tip of my finger. If you happen to go outside of the lines, you can always uh, clean it up with a baby wipe. You will be able to clean up everything before it's uh, completely set. So now I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is nice and dry. This is going to turn the ink permanent. Now I'm going to use the darkest of uh, the markers that I have. And I'm also going to add uh, darker touches on the deer as well. But again, remember that you can color your images before you stick them down. That would be way easier than what I'm trying to do here. So anyway, I'm really happy with how this uh, deer is looking at the moment. So I will stop here and I will continue coloring the rest of the animals on my page using the exact same method. And here is everything completely colored. Now I will go ahead and dilute some uh, white gesso with water and with a thin brush I'm going to do some splashes. And I'm not going to cover up the tree trunks or the animals. I want my snow to be all over the place and uh, especially in front of the animals as if it's falling in front of them. Now I'm using the tip of my marker to just touch the bottom of my animals just to create a little bit of shadow there so they don't look as they are floating. And then uh, I will go ahead and uh, add some more texture on my page by using a bossing paste. I am spreading everything with uh, my spatula as if it is butter. You can uh, leave it rough with uh, lots of uh, texture or you can apply it totally flat. That's up to you. 
I'm not going to completely cover up the white space, I'm just going to apply it in different areas. And I have a lovely winter scene, I had so much uh, fun creating it, especially the birch trees, and I hope you will try them too. Now, uh, the only thing I need to do is uh, to add the quote, for that I will go with uh, let it snow. You can uh, just um, write it down with your marker, I decided to go with my alphabet uh, stamps here, and black archival link. And I'm also going to add some highlights on uh, the letters with my white gel pen. And that is going to complete the project for today. This is the last video for 2017. I want to thank you all so much for all the lovely comments that I got the whole year and all of you who keep watching my videos. I hope the next year is going to be healthy, successful and super creative. And I want to wish you all a happy new year. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next year.